joining the show tonight to shine some light on the enigma that is D2 football playoffs. It is the return of Wayne Cavati. What's up, man? Uh, you know, it's the uh, busy time of the year. There's a little tournament about to start. So uh, just looking forward to some of the best football we've been waiting for all year. Amen. You say it lightly, but certainly so. We have the the playoff bracket fully revealed now for Division Two, and let's just go through super region by region. Talk about it. And the first one, I don't think it was anything too crazy. Kutztown taking the number one overall, especially after that PSAC championship game performance. Them in Charleston, I guess, was maybe a little bit of a mix up for a time there, as far as who would lock up that one seed in the bye. Uh, any kind of thoughts on that? Those two seemed like locks, but from there on out, I think this the super region could have gone maybe a variety of different ways as far as where the teams were seated. Yeah, I'll agree with you there. Um, you know, for me, I was doing my projections on the D two report starting in mid October ish. Yeah. Um, so I did have Kutztown all the way there because I, you know, I figured if they, if it was at that point, if it was Cal or Slippery Rock, whoever it was, they played in the PSAC championship. And if they won, that would give them the metrics needed to to jump Charleston. Mm-hmm. Um, to your point, it's more 1A, 1B. You know, if you look at the metrics, they're so super close. It's just the, the, what, what separated them was the minutiae. Um, and Kutztown got that advantage. And that's the way it looked like it was going to happen from, from the outset. Uh, Cal had to go over Slippery Rock because they they beat them, so that was pretty yep. obvious there. Um, really, the the exciting part: East Stroudsburg and New Haven were pretty much in for the last couple of weeks. If, in my opinion, the exciting part was what happened with Ashland and Finley. Yes, um, Finley had that spot locked up, and then were was upset by Tiffin. Um, I don't know if you call it an upset, but based on regional rankings, technically it was speaking, a, right, the Battle of right. Two Twenty Four. Yeah, exactly. The lower seed came out on top. So it was an upset in that aspect. And that opened the door and, and got Ashland in because of who, you know, the, the earlier wins Ashland had against the, the like competition. Yeah. Um, so, you know, super region one is usually not in the sense that it's not a deep region, but it's so familiar that it's usually the easiest to project right from the start. And, um, of course, a couple teams shift in and out. But, you know, right from the start, this is kind of what it looked like. But to your point, it was how the seeding was going to go. And and that all played itself out for, luckily, very easily the last week yeah. of the season. There weren't wasn't much to do. Yeah, Ashland was really kind of mentioned that, what the quote-unquote surprise and uh, the depth of the PSAC, I think we expected at the start of the year. Now, did we know what four teams would be in there? The top two, I think for sure. The Slippery Rock and, and Kutztown came into the year with a lot of momentum, and uh, there were obviously some questions from people. The Cal PA, they, they retained their their third spot even after that loss in the PSAC championship, but you talked about the head-to-head and that metric, and mm-hmm. that that should mean something, right? And when you come to this, this part of the year, it certainly should, and it seems like at certain points of this bracket, it does, and then maybe at others, not so much leaned on as heavily. Um, but that's yeah. a different conversation. But, uh, <laughs> right. you know, New Haven in there as well, it seemed like they were pretty locked up, especially with this earned access rule and uh, representation yep. over there from the NE10. So that was that was one that was certainly going to happen. And you talked about that that Finley upset from Tiff. And I think that's the, the biggest takeaways from here, but the, the depth of the PSAC. I mean, again, not mm-hmm. necessarily incredibly surprising, although is it maybe a little bit frustrating that we get – uh, a regular season rematch of Slippery Rock and New yeah. Haven in that round one, and then obviously a PSAC uh, foes there in Cal PA and East Stroudsburg? Yeah, I mean, that, and that's always going to be part of the aspect of regionalization is that yep. you're going to run into that, um, and you have to make it that the seeding plays out so that the rightful home team is a ho- you know is a host that seed that's higher, and that's just – unfortunate one of the 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 i don't want to say it's a downside but it is one of the factors of of regionalization is that you're going to run into those rematches um one little tidbit about new haven and i'm not sure the exact number i think it was five and i found this interesting is they're one of just like four or five teams to have made it four years in a row really uh, in the entire tournament and you know they're the company like ferris states and yeah. Hardings. you know it's like a it, so it's pretty impressive that they, they they keep finding their way back in there and um, they should definitely get kudos for that. No, that's that is certainly deserving of props, and that's an offense that I believe is averaging almost like 35 points per game right now against, yeah. you know, and again, inside a conference play, maybe not the toughest schedule or gauntlet, so to speak, but there are some teams over there and, you know, squads like Assumption and St. Anselm had a decent year and a Bentley team yeah. that comes out. You know, there's it's not like every week over there is a cupcake. I certainly don't want to give that impression. Absolutely. But, 
Um, yeah, over to Super Region number two, I think uh, the biggest case, Valdosta State coming at the one seed, the bye, seemingly made a lot of sense from my perspective. I think there was some conversation for Wingate maybe having a case for the number one seed coming off of that SAC championship game where they kind of uh, slayed their demons, so to speak. Uh, yeah. That Carson Newman, that, that loss that haunted them from earlier in the season, their only loss of the year. But talk to me about this Super Region, what you see. First of all, not necessarily about the Super Region, but we have to give kudos to Wingate. Wingate. Their defense is absurd. Yes. Uh, and they can, I think Valdosta State is the number one, but the Bulldogs are just as much a team to beat here. They, mm-hmm. they, they are, that defense is amazing, especially what they did to Carson Newman, as you said, in that championship game. But I do agree. I thought coming into those last three weeks, Valdosta State's early season was a little bit softer than others just based on numbers. That West Alabama game was erased because of the hurricane, so we didn't yes. get to see what they would do against a, a team. And But then they came in and they played Delta State and West Florida, and those were two teams in the playoff conversation, and they handled them, like dominated Emphasis them. on handled, absolutely. Yes, and uh, we're looking at a team that has a top 10 offense and top 10 defense in pretty much every st- stat. So, you know, that's not part of the selection process, but is it – show that they're deserving absolutely um and it was tight it was definitely tight because wingate has that strength of schedule but you know at the end of the day valdosta state won their conference went undefeated and uh, i think those those last two wins were the metric where pushed the metrics to where they needed to be that number one i agree with you there and i think valdosta their their offense and has been the focal point of the conversation around that team especially you know the quarterback position and uh that's something that i think overshadows a lot of other pieces of their team that maybe uh people don't realize are very good right they are a very complimentary playing football team that we talk about um i know i do at wingate that has you know feels like plays all three phases very well but is right mm-hmm. there we just uh yeah. maybe that gets overshadowed by some of the stuff they have going on offensively because they've been that good uh, yeah. and you know it, moving down true. the list virginia union they get in after that ciaa championship they'll uh, go over to wingate to take on the bulldogs and um then from there west alabama lenore ryan lenore ryan one of those teams that was uh certainly Maybe not one of the ones that was predicted by most people, I should say, to, to come in and, and nab one of those final spots there. Talk about uh, those two matchups. I mean, this is where I'm not envious to be in the selection committee because not Lenore, Ryan, right, Lenore Ryan and Emory and Henry were so close in the metrics, and you have to figure out which metric is the one that bumps one in over the other. And, and that's where we talk you know, head-to-head, and it's like, how do you – oh, right. Yeah, and it gets harder and harder as you go down that list. Same with Virginia Union, Winston-Salem State, and, and Johnson C. Smith. But the yeah. committee ultimately came to their decision. And if you're, you know, I think all the teams were worthy. And, and that's that's the problem with another factor of regionalization. And I think um, I'm really interested in seeing what Jada Byers can do against that Wingate defense. I mean, it, it's going to be one of the best matchups of the first round is him versus them. You know, um, and then West Alabama, you know, I didn't really get to watch too much of them. And I went to their game uh, two weeks ago against Shorter and they're really, really smart. Right. They may not be atop the statistical leaderboards with the best quarterback and running back by stats, but they're really smart in how they play the game on both sides of the ball. And I was really impressed with them. And, you know, Lenore Ryan's one of those teams that always they change coaches twice now in the last few what five years mm-hmm. they they change quarterbacks they change running backs and they find themselves they're always in the conversation so it's impressive and and you know it it's not a surprise to me that they found their way back in it's definitely one of those teams too i think um certainly not a metric but uh, name recognition and and brand yeah. association so to speak For sure. um it could For certainly sure. play a subliminal part in in that selection not to say they're not deserving like you said there are a lot of teams that are and uh not to brush over miles either i believe right now yeah. looks like the top scoring defense out of the siac right now and this is a team in a, a defense that i'm very curious to see what that matchup looks like against Carson Newman. And um, I, admittedly, I don't believe they've seen that style of offense from a team like this. So how do they uh-huh. respond from that on kind of a quote-unquote short week uh, as far as prep is concerned and finding out their slate? That will be a kind of an intriguing matchup for me. But we can keep moving over to the gauntlet that is Super Region number three. And I think um, out of all the Super Regions, this for me was the most cut and dry as far as not any surprises here for me. I kind of understood where these teams were going to be at. And the simple fact is that all these teams won and took care of business. Um, and there wasn't a lot of shakeups here. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, 
it, but to your point, coming down the stretch, Fort Hayes State, uh, Central Missouri, Southern Arkansas, none of those teams made it easy, right? No, like, they did not. It's, it's like you said, every one of these teams had to win or they were done. Whoever lost was out. Yeah. Um, and, it, it, and you know, it's Super Region 3 should have its own tournament after this <laughs> and just extend that to 28 teams, and I would watch. Um, yes. But, yeah, I mean, you're looking at national champions all over the place in here, and, um, you know, like, Again, I wouldn't want to be in that room. I admittedly, I got the the region right in my projections. I admittedly, I had Ferris State, Grand Valley State, Pittsburgh State, and then I thought the the Washita win over Henderson State it, to to take the GAC was going to bump them over Central Oklahoma right. and get yep. that that host seed. I admit I was wrong there, but those metrics are so close um, that I understand. Like I don't I don't disagree with it. I just uh, I just had it projected a little differently. And then you know you. You have Harding in there down at the sixth seed, and they're the defending national champs that set just about every record in the rushing yeah. book that you could set last year. And it's, it's and now you got to go on the road, right? You're ten and one. You got to go on the road uh, to defend your national championship. It's just amazing what happens in that part of the of the country. It is, and there's a lot of teams that are very happy that Zowska, Zach Zabrowski, excuse me, will be on not none that. of these. <laughs> brackets um yeah. and not just him obviously that team down there UCM has been playing also very complimentary football in like all three phases and they've had their slips and stumbles along the way I believe three losses uh, along the year but you look at some of those wins over the opponents down there in the MIAA who has just cannibalized itself and Pittsburgh mm -hmm. State UCO come out of it Central Oklahoma winning their first outright MIAA championship is obviously uh big time news for the Broncos down there and then Saginaw might have been one of those teams too that would have potentially made yeah. things interesting, but how about a Michigan Tech fourth quarter comeback to force the Cardinals even out of the conversation? And even with a win there and, and say you jump over you Indy, who again took care of business, that earned access rule comes into play. And that's not something that would have yeah. really shaken up the standings uh, whatsoever. But I think the one team I'm, I'm curious to hear about from you is this Grand Valley squad. And they've been, I would say, suspect I think is the term at a couple points throughout this season you look at that uh, lacrosse game where admittedly they were down a couple quarterbacks at mm -hmm. home that was a one score contest this past week maybe not putting away a Roosevelt team early on like a lot of people would have expected or uh, a couple different games where they didn't seem to just jump up and, and take a commanding lead against opponents where maybe people thought it should be more of a blowout and not a two score contest now with that being said they've handled business for the most part outside of a you know the anomaly that is the Ferris State Bulldogs but uh what can we expect from the Lakers? They still have a lot of playmakers on both sides of the ball. So I think you nailed it on the head, but I think this is what we've typically seen from Grand Valley State, right? They have playmakers on all sides of the ball, but they're so deep that none of those guys are superstars, right? Yeah. They're not going to have a lot of All-Americans just because they're not getting the stats, but they are All-American worthy players on both sides of the ball and special teams. And I think that's just the way Grand Valley State does that they're, they're they they win games. They don't care how they win games, right? Sure. And sometimes it's gonna you're gonna scratch your head and 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 be like, wow, that game should have been a lot more lopsided. But then they're gonna have wins against CSU Pueblo and and all the other schools that they need to beat. You know. Yep. Um, Dominant sure performance against the West Florida squad that I watched from start yeah. to finish, and that was an eye opening yeah. experience. Right. Right. So you know, and and those are the teams that are going to be playing here. And you know, the Ferris State game. You got to remember they lost both their their, their starting and yep. their their second string quarterback. And look, you don't make any excuses against Ferris State. You like it, it's not going to be an easy thing even with those guys. So I don't want to say that would have changed anything, but to to look at that as their only loss, the number one team in the country, in my opinion, you know, in, in D two, um, I think that's that's a, a a big part of it. And I think Grand Valley State is definitely going to hold its own. Um, I, I think. Uh, you know, UND having to go into Lubber Stadium in November is, I'm not envious of them. No. Uh, you know, not many I, are. I think, I think they should be fine in the first round, which gives us a potential Ferris State, Grand Valley State, you know, another, another go round. And we'll see how that is. But you got to, you know, to your point last year, remember that Harding Grand Valley State game was seven to six. And, and Harding won in, like, the last minutes of the game. So Yeah, it was like an eight-minute drive down the field of just the <laughs> death march, basically, for the for the Bisons. Yeah, and that's what – so that just, you know, back to my point is Grand Valley State doesn't care how they win. If it's a slugfest, they find a way. If it's not their best, they still find a way. And, and that's just the way that they've, they've always done things, in my opinion. And, I, and that's fine for me because you at the end of the day, you figure out how to win.
I'm with you there. They're going to wear teams out. I think they certainly yeah. are. They have already. I mean, you have a dominant ground attack they have, and Eichelberger out of the backfield fits that style, I think, very well. Talk about his physical frame, but he's also fast, like too fast for, for that size. And the people are not supposed to move like that when they're built like that. And so there's uh, there's a lot going for their, for their ground game. But to close things off, Super Region 4, the fourth time Mankato and Augustana have played in the last two years. We get a first-round rematch from last year, courtesy of, of Witt over there. Well, I didn't know that one, but he, he brought that up. Um, yeah, outside yeah. of that, Pueblo takes the, the one spot. We have a different RMAC team heading up the Super Region this year. And then uh, Bemidji and Angelo is going to certainly be an interesting one. The Beavers went down and took out a really prominent offense in UTPV last year. Their defense traveled very well. And now you have still the number one scoring defense in the NSIC, taking on Angelo State, who's back after kind of a rebound year. And uh, finally, Mountaineers, Wildcats, Western Colorado, and Washington. Kind of uh, seemingly a very wide-open super region, but everything goes through Pueblo and the Thunderdome. And uh, first of all, Thunderdome. How, how awesome is that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or Thunderbowl, excuse me, not Dome. Thunderbowl. Yeah, yeah you're sorry. Thunderbowl. Yes. Uh, my fault. Uh, but, you know, it, I think you hit it. It's This is the most wide open region. I think anything can happen here. Um, you know, Bemidji, they came alive at the end. Uh, won their, they, they literally earned their way into this. I yes. know everyone earns their way, but they fought their way to get that last spot. Um, and uh, everyone... They've been. This is their fourth year in a row, and not enough people talk about the fact that they've won their first round game every year. Yes. Like this is a battle tested team that always comes through. And I think this Angelo State team. I actually had Angelo State as the number two over Western Colorado. Okay. But so I had those flipped in my projections. But this Angelo State team is really good. But Bemidji has that first round magic that I think this is going to be a lot better game than a lot of people are anticipating. Um, and then, yeah, Augustana and, and Minnesota State, there's no love lost there. Uh, you know, regular season they meet, re- playoffs they meet. Um, and I think the the Western Colorado offense against that Central Washington defense is a perfect matchup for the first round and should be very exciting. But like you said, like these, these Thunderwolves, uh, I, I think I pointed it out in my Power 10 rankings. The last time the Thunderwolves won the uh, RMAC was 2014. And they happen to win a national championship the same year. Yep. So if uh, history repeats itself, um, like you said, it does. It goes through the Thunderdome, and you got to consider them the favorites because of that advantage. And um, But it is wide open, and I think anything can happen here. Yeah, it's wide open in terms of who could come out on top, also wide open, and this is probably the largest geographic spread that we have yeah. out of all of them. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, if only Western Oregon somehow had snuck their way into this too, and we could have just had a ridiculously large <laughs> overreach yeah. of just covering half the country. I was going to say every state uh, west of the Mississippi would have had representation. <laughs> yeah. It's just, let's just lump them into the Lone Star, I suppose. <laughs> but awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate it. I won't hold too much more of your time. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining me tonight. I'm excited to get going this weekend. Hopefully going to be um, on site for, you know, maybe a game or two here as we, as we get going. But uh, any, any early picks for who we can expect to see in uh, Texas in December? Man, I'm I'm actually working on my my prediction piece for tomorrow morning, so I'm not there yet. But I it looks like I you're at the stadium it. already. Are you camping out until the championship game? <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna be here until <laughs> December. Uh, um, but I look, man, I I, I love what Valdosta State's doing. I, yeah, I, you know, I think they have to be real strong contenders, and you know, obviously, it's gonna be someone from Super Region Three in the mix. I mean, that's just the way it is. Uh, and the question is, is Who's it going to be? Yeah. And, uh, I, I don't know that I can answer that at this moment, but I'm going to have to guess. And I, I guess you you lean towards Ferris State, but I would not be surprised at all to see Harding figure out a way to come out of that bracket with mm-hmm. all the experience they have from last year's run, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. But I think there's there's about four or five true contenders in, in my eye that are really have a chance to, to win it all. But I think all 28 teams are, are right there in the conversation. Oh, 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 oh,